Hello. It was around 150 years ago. I was presented to Nasruddin Shah of the Qajar dynasty when he visited Europe. I am a witness of history, a music box. The Shah was so delighted that he took me to Iran with him. Frustrated by the problems of the country, His Excellency would sometimes come and sit beside me to listen to the sound of music, which had a wonderful effect on him. The flame of an old candle can light up hundreds of candles today, so as to light up a dark corner of the history. Today, Tehran, Golestan Palace, another one of the witnesses of history, the peacock throne at the top of the Salam Hall. Fat Ali Shah Qajar would sit on it to welcome statesmen and foreign envoys. However, this throne is a false witness. This is not the one Nasruddin Shah ordered to be portrayed with. Come along with me. Here's the main throne, preserved in the treasury of the national jewels. This is the throne that was built at the order of Fat Ali Shah and named after one of his many wives of the harem, Tavus. This is the very same throne which Nasiruddin Shah ordered to be repaired and its gemstones were listed in just the same way as all other gems in the collection. دو تخمی وسط کمرنگ قنچه ها کمرنگ دست خورده دو قطعه باقی درست ده قطعه از سه قیراتی اله دو قیراتی As if one would hear the voice of those men who carefully counted the precious jewels and marked them in a list The unique collection of Treasury of the National Jewels is a collection of the most precious jewelry in the world, which has been amassed over centuries. Every single piece tells a story about the tumultuous history of the people of this nation and shows how tasteful and creative they have been. Every single piece of jewelry recalls memories of defeat and triumph pride and arrogance, and the despotic and conceited nature of the rulers.
Many untold old stories are concealed in the quiet of the hall. They bring back to life sweet, bitter memories from the history of a nation. From the days when men wore simple attire, a garment reminiscent of the bitterest memories in this treasury is all that is left. The apparel of the Shah, beside the attire of a great minister who was murdered at the order of the Shah himself. Nasreddin Shah and Amir Kabir. The man who perhaps, if he was not murdered. Anyway. Look at his attire and think about the moment the Shah's men conveyed the message of murder in the Finn Garden at Kashan. An eminent man whose blood was spilled on the pages of history of a nation. A crimson blood glittering as the rubies which traveled all the way from the mines of Burma. They are on the buckle of a belt and strangely they are called Pigeon's blood. Most of the red gems are either rubies or spinels, all known in the past as rubies. It is said that Iranian gemologists were the first to differentiate between a spinal and a ruby. This is the largest spinal ever known. With a unique color, the spinal weighs 500 carats and according to an old myth, it is known as the Samaritan spinal. The usual way of smoking in the East has long been the water pipe or hookah. The water makes the fuming tobacco smoke pleasant. Iranian turquoise has long been known and admired by all. This hookah bowl and base, which are encrusted by rows of turquoise and ruby, are most probably from the Nasreddin Shah era. It is not known why Karim Khan is and knelt down in such an awkward manner to smoke hookah. The decoration of the hookah base and bowl was one of the major works of the enamelists in Tehran in the Qajar period. Here is Fatali Shah who would rarely, of course, forgo the carnal joys of life. Hookah base made of the ostrich eggshell. Astounding work by an unknown artist.
an ambassador from the West wrote 200 years ago, There used to exist too many dancers in Persia, and Persian poets have versified much about their beautiful faces. They were part of the entertainment in any feast, anywhere, anytime. Hookahs, basin sets, bowls, ewers, trays, dish covers, and candlesticks would be found in large numbers at the banquets of kings and the nobility. Gemmed dish cover. This is not only the finest ewer, but historically the most important enamel work in the collection, which if rightly dated back to the Zan period, is greatly significant in the art history of Iran. This candlestick is made of pure gold, encrusted with emerald, spinal, and diamond. Decanters of this type, encrusted with a variety of gemstones, including spinal and emerald, were used mostly in pre-Safavid court life in Iran. Pearl has for a long time been a special possession of rulers, and this is particularly true for Persian kings. Cushions and carpets on which kings lent or sat had the texture of pearl. Glasses, lids, candlesticks and boxes would be ornamented by pearl. And kings would wear threads of pearl on their waist to signify their royal status. A variety of royal pearls in a wooden box coated with gold and enameled. They would occasionally use pearls with strange shapes to turn them into special forms. The royal crown of the Qajar dynasty, the Kiani crown. Qajar kings are seen with similar crowns that are only slightly different from this one. Fatali Shah. Nasiruddin Shah. Zafaridin Shah and Muhammad Ali Shah. It can be inferred that the painter, depending on his skill and artistry, had manipulated minute details of the motif, or they had been similar crowns of which only this one survived. 
Some 1800 pearls create a white background for green emeralds and crimson rubies and spinels to signify Iran's national flag. This ornamental piece is the most magnificent aigrette in the collection, very much like by Fat Ali Shah. It is seen on the royal crown in many of his pictures. Some assume that the aigrette is made of bird feathers, which are a minimized form of Cyprus, a symbol of Persia and Persians, as well as of their candor and humility. Rostam o Sohrab, Iranian's Perpetual Tragedy. Others assign motifs of Egret to the Sassanid and Mazdakid periods who considered Cyprus a symbol of freedom, portraying a mourning, bending Cyprus when their leader Mazdak was killed. This fine ornament is known as the Naderit Egret, inspired by the name of Nader, the Persian expansionist king. An egret on the crown-like hat of Abbas Mirzas, courageous crown prince of Fath Ali Shah who never came to power. Weapons, quivers, swords, shields. Nader Shah's shield, which is said to be made of rhinoceros hide, was extravagantly covered by gemstones to celebrate his glories. While old weapons of war went down with history, kings would still wear gem-studded swords, not as a weapon, but as a display of authority. This encrusted sword was presented to Nasreddin Shah by his chancellor, Amino Sultan. Later, when Muzaffariddin Shah went to visit Britain's King Edward VII, the very same sword showed his royal splendor. Napoleon III, the Emperor of France, and gold coins which he presented to Persia's court. During the 19th century, kings exchanged medals or other precious items with their portraits or insignia on them as a way of rapport and friendship. I myself am an instance of a gift from abroad. Medal of the Ottoman Emperor Medal of the Austro-Hungarian Emperor
This fine ewer is an example of enamel work in the Qajar period, which reached a peak during Fath Ali Shah's reign and to a lesser extent during that of Nasiruddin Shah. A sword presented by the Russian Tsar Alexander II with his initials on it. The same initials on this medal. All the new gemstones with modern and old lapidary are combined in necklaces and tiaras. Only one of these gems, the Nurul Ain diamond, is internationally recorded. gold jewelry box on which the picture of King Vittorio Emmanuel II of Italy can be seen. Jewelry box encrusted with diamonds, which was presented by the Bulgarian king Ferdinand I. Emeralds, numerous emeralds, on necklaces, crowns and tiaras, rings belts, pierced and on board, like the diamonds and spinals and pearls in this collection, every bead with an old untold story. 92 emeralds emit a gold diamond encrusted skin, form a small box. Fatali Shah Qajar was of course a more imposing figure with the royal crown. An anonymous artist who would reproduce the Shah's portrait on tiny pieces of Persian jewelry, turquoise, did not know that his craftsmanship and artistry would be even more admired by future generations than the Shah himself. Shah's portraits should be reproduced to make him immortal. Medal of His Excellency worn by the British Queen Victoria. Brooch of His Excellency worn by Austro-Hungarian Emperor Franz Joseph. On his way back to Iran, His Excellency would acquire objects as well as the ones presented to him while abroad. For example, myself and the African yellow diamonds, the biggest one weighing 152 carats. The rose-colored Daryay Noor diamond, or Sea of Light, weighing 182 carats, 
It is as if Persian kings are carved into the historic memory of this gem. Nader Shah Afshar Muhammad Shah Muzaffar Din Shah Ahmad Shah Qajar and Reza Shah Pahlavi Displaying this unique gem on the front part of their crowns these kings would show off their eminence and power. The inscriptions on the sides of this throne explicitly attribute it to Fatali Shah, and although it is called Naderi throne, it is unconnected to Nader Shah Afshar. Fatali Shah intended to display the pomp and splendor of his court to his subjects as well as to the foreign envoys who visited him in his summer resorts in suburbs of Tehran. The throne is made of nearly 27,000 gemstones and has detachable parts. It was also used in two coronation ceremonies by the Pahlavi kings. The royal crown of the Qajar period went down in history and the two Pahlavi kings wore another crown. This crown, inspired by the shape of Sasanid crowns, is made of more than 3,000 gemstones. Who knew that when the second Shah of Pahlavi put it with his own hands on his head, he was in fact putting an end to all the coronation ceremonies in Iran's history. The last Persian Shah put the crown on the head of the Empress personally to appoint her as the regent to the monarchy. Nasreddin Shah ordered to turn the onset colorful gemstones into a globe of jewels. And when he rested his hand on it, maybe he felt that the world was under his powerful grip. If in this magnificent globe with over 51,000 gemstones, oceans and seas are made of emerald and the land areas are in red spinal and ruby, the land of Iran is made of brilliant diamonds which are glittering just like its history, calling for the attention of the East and the West. Thank you.
Those who come to visit may admire and be astounded and may soliloquize in their minds and in the colorful, solemn atmosphere of these witnesses to history that we are the puppets and fate the puppeteer. This is not a metaphor, but a truth sincere. On this stage, fate for some time our moves steer into the chest of non-existence, one by one disappear. It was a delight to have your company with all the gems, all the history, and perhaps all the lessons to be learned. Good night.